Hello, everyone. I'm going to talk about narrowband IoT in the context of low power wide area technology or LPWA. So here is the agenda of today. So let me give a quick overview of what is LPWA. So there are many different requirements and use cases that drive LPWA. If you look at LPWA, it is divided into two. First is the proprietary technologies like LoRa and Sigfox. Secondly, is a 3GPP standardized technology like shown here, NB-IoT, CAT-M1, and CAT-1. If you look at the bottom of the pyramid, you can see NB-IoT. And NB-IoT has a number of requirements like low power, wide area coverage, high density, and low data rate. And these requirements drive use cases like asset management and also smart metering. As you move up the, the pyramid, you can see the requirement changes. So mobility is being introduced, the data rate increases, and then the latency improves. So with that, this enables other use cases like smart home and smart city. But this comes at the expense of higher cost per module. You can see LTE CAT M1 and CAT1, it has a higher cost per module. And there's always a trade-off between the different requirements and also cost. So this is the five design goals that have been laid out for NB IoT. First, high density. It's very important to have a massive connections. We are talking about some predictions to have 5 billion LPWA connections by 2022. And therefore, the massive connection is so important. And one of the important requirements in that front is to have at least 50,000 connections per cell. And cost-effective design is another important factor. So we need to have a very cost-effective design, but the design has to be very reliable and stable especially most of the NB-IoT devices will be placed in a remote condition uh, which is left unattended without any human intervention. Battery longevity. So the one of the important requirements is to have 10 years battery life. So if you look at some of the features being introduced in 3GPP like power safe mode, PSM, and enhanced discontinuous reception, EDRX, so these two features would force the device to go into deep sleep mode and also idle mode to optimize the battery life. And then extreme coverage is another important design goal, especially some of the uh, clear requirement for NB-IoT is to have 164 dB of link budget, which is 20 dB better compared to GPRS. And if you look at the CAT, I mean the other uh, LPWA technologies like CAT-M, they have a link budget in the range of 140 uh, dB as well. And this good link budget would enable signal penetration to an area where this, normally the signal coverage is very poor, like basement and also tunnel. And then the, finally, a seamless upgrade of the existing LTE and GSM network to NB-IoT is another important goal for NB-IoT. So here is a quick overview of the 3GPP standardization. So LPWA has been there for a while, and there are multiple LPWA technology, and the technology is very fragmented with, without any clear effort to standardize all these technologies. So the, the wireless ecosystem with 21 mobile network operators have joined forces in GSMA to standardize the NB-IoT standard. So NB-IoT started as a clean slate in 3GPP with two formats being proposed. You can see NB-M2M. This is a format proposed by High Silicon and NB OFDMA, this is another format proposed by Qualcomm. These two format is combined to form NB CIoT. 
and NBC IoT is further combined into NBLT, which is another format from, L from Intel to form NB IoT. And the first standard of NB IoT was released late, late last year through 3GPP release 13. And then their further evolution is happening in release 14, where a number of important features like positioning and, uh, and also multicast has been introduced. And in terms of the timeline, you can see the first 3GPP spec is completed. And then the conformance system readiness and also the field trial. This is nearing the completion. And finally, the commercialization is underway. And this is just to give a quick overview about 3GPP numbering scheme. So one important point to note here is the 3GPP numbering scheme for LTE and NB-IoT is identical. And that explains you know, the lot of leverage that we made in NB-IoT from LTE. And that's one of the reasons where the standard can be accelerated. In fact, we developed the standard in a record-breaking time. And key side uh, contributed immensely in the development of the standard. You can clearly see that we own the core specification, the development of the core specification, 36.508. And we also contributed in developing number of RF and RRM test cases. And we contribute to the acceleration of the standard, which is in a record-breaking time. So here is a number of key parameters for NB-IoT. So as you can see, most of the frequency bands that initially introduced for NB-IoT, these are adopted from LTE. So as more and more operators come forward to introduce the services, the number of bands continue to increase. In fact, there are a lot of new bands are already in the proposal stage at 3GPP, and this number of bands are going to continue to increase. And then one key difference in NB-IoT is it uses half-duplex mode. And, and the half-duplex mode is purely for cost reduction purpose. So with the half-duplexing mode, so we can avoid having a duplexer, which is a very expensive component in the design. And the other key difference, I would say, is in NB-IoT, we have one physical resource block with 180 kilohertz size, which is divided into 12, 15 kilohertz subcarrier. And they also have an option to break this further to 48, 3.75 kilohertz subcarrier. This is very important, especially to enable capacity at the signaling, uh, at, a, at the area where we see a very poor coverage. So this is one of the key feature. Multiplex, multiple access scheme and the modulation schemes are pretty similar to LTE. For MIMO, there's no MIMO, it's just a single link. The coverage is very important under 64 dB link budget. Uh, data rate in the range of tens of kilobits per second. Latency ten, less than 10 seconds. And, and mo it's a nomadic mobility without any handover. Only cell reselection is allowed. OK, this is the various or three different operating mode in NB-IoT. The operators normally set a clear strategy on how they want to deploy their spectrum. And if you can see clearly, there are three standalone mode. And this is, again, one of the very unique feature in NB-IoT. So for most of the uh, carriers, they are, they are looking into re-farming their GSM spectrum. And therefore, we can reuse the GSM spectrum to deploy NB-IoT. So the, GS, the channel bandwidth for GSM is 200 kilohertz. And for NB-IoT, it's 180 kilohertz. So with that, it naturally can fit very well uh, into the GSM carrier. And then the guard band, I think this is the least popular among the three uh, modes. The guard band is basically utilizing the unused spectrum at the guard band to uh, deploy NB-IoT. And then the third deployment mode is in-band, which is very popular and widely deployed by many operators. For in-band mode, we are basically taking one chunk of spectrum to deploy NB-IoT without any disruption to LTE services. And Keysight have a solution with our UXM, which is a leading uh, highly integrated wireless test set to provide all the three 
modes, and in fact, we are demonstrating all the three modes uh, today, and if you have a time, please take a look on, on the modes that we are demonstrating with all the different chipset and different devices. And these are some of the test challenges that we are seeing in the industry, driven by NB-IoT stringent requirement, especially when it comes to battery life cycle, battery lifetime, when it comes to a simple but must be a reliable design. So number one is power consumption. So in order to ensure that we uh, have 10 years battery life, it's very important that we avoid any settings or any application that drain out the battery. You know, say for example, if let's say we wanted to continue to update the software uh, to provide bug fixes or enhancements, this is one of the things that will drain out the battery and should be avoided. And also there are some network settings. For example, in NB-IoT, we have offload a lot of uh, complexities to the base station and the uh, operation at the UE is kept very simple. Even we don't even have authentication. So it's very simple, straightforward, and therefore it's very important that we really understand all the network settings and avoid any network settings that can drain out the battery. So we have a solution, our UXM, which is our network emulator, can, uh, can emulate the network settings and can test it out so that we can avoid uh, any of these settings. Superior coverage or extreme coverage is another very important feature. So I said a very good link budget is crucial, especially to penetrate into indoor or into basement, especially for applications like smart parking where this is used in the basement. It's important that we have a good extreme coverage which is enabled by the good RF link budget. And also some of the NB-IoT devices uh, house multiple radios. You know, we have uh, devices that support all the way from Bluetooth, all the Bluetooth all the way to cellular radios. And it's important that we avoid all the interferences. So Keysight provide a range of solutions to measure, to characterize, to characterize the RF and also do a complete thorough measurement of the RF parametric and also, also RF performance. And in terms of the reliability, as I said, uh, the, the device will be left unattended without any human intervention. Therefore, it's very important that whenever there is any glitch happens uh, due to the network, so the, the device should auto-recover. And we have a solution, UXM have a built-in IoT server where you can emulate the real network environment, and we can create multiple test scenarios to to emulate uh, some of the negative scenarios to test it out so that we can assure the reliability when we test out the device. And finally, industry acceptance is another important criteria. And some of the challenges that we have is a number of operators, they wanted to test beyond the conformance specification. So they want to test something unique to them. And therefore, the number of test complexity and number of test cases continue to increase. There are also some regulatory uh, requirement for some specific regions, like things like RNTTE in Europe and FCC in US, due to the frequency allocation. So they have some specific needs of a test plan. So they wanted to test beyond the conformance or 3GPP requirements. So Keysight have a number of solutions in that space, you know, all the way to support from protocol, RF, RRM. And we have our test systems like T4010 and A9000 that can provide the solution, not only supporting the industry certification like GCF and PTCRB, but we also have a solution that supports all the operator needs and requirements. So finally, um, Keysight have a range, wide array of products to support the entire workflow and also NB-IoT lifecycle all the way from R&D to full deployment. And with that, uh, Keysight will always be the partner of choice to support your NB-IoT test challenges. Thank you.